very near and dear to my heart. This is how I got started in um, uh, working in politics was uh, grassroots organizing. I decided to start my own group and get going uh, out of this passion and drive I had in, uh, in 2020. So it's really exciting to be with you guys tonight. Okay, there we go. Uh, once again, we introduced ourselves. I'm Jenny Okamoto and then Kaz and Terry are with us this evening. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, locate the chat, and I understand that not everybody knows that right off the bat, just go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little chat icon, and you should be able to, uh, you know, put some information in there. Zoom has been great. They've added some emojis and fun things. So that's really, like, really cool that we could do that. Um, and yes, once again, let us know where you're joining us from. Super exciting to see that. All righty. Perfect. A few friendly norms while we're in our chat tonight. Uh, keep yourself muted unless uh, you are speaking and we can unmute for you. Uh, introduce yourself in the chat and um, also enter any questions or follow-ups in the chat. That way you can kind of park that information there in the chat. We'll be monitoring it. Kaz and Terry may answer it or we'll circle back at the end of the discussion. So we try to keep it to an hour, respect your time. Uh, and thanks again for joining us. So we're going to start out a little bit about building bridges, and we really dig into building bridges with this talk because we are a grassroots organization. So I kind of want to show you a little more in de um, depth what a grassroots organization can be like. Uh, that's how we got started. And then we'll talk a little bit about what is grassroots organizing, why grassroots, and then some uh, tools and keys to like a successful organization itself. Uh, and then, of course, we will talk about events. Uh, once uh, Building Bridges for America, uh, you can access all of our resources, including our slides, our videos. We have all of this on demand in case you want to share it with someone or review it later. Uh, in addition, we have great grab and go. Uh, someone was talking about doing a voter registration, things like that. There's great resources there. Uh, but Building Bridges isn't just what you're seeing right now. There's a lot that we do. We have a fabulous book club that's created this wonderful community to engage and inform. Uh, and we're working on some voter registration and uh, especially with field team six, they do a beautiful job with that. So my friend who's looking to organize, you may want to lean into that resource uh, and check out field team six for that because they'll have some ready resources for you. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot available right there. Our calendar is there. So I invite you to check out our website and share it with others if you think it'll be a great resource. Um, you know, as, Demo as Democrats, we believe that the economy should work with everyone, um, you know, in our diversity is our strength and we believe uh, democracy is worth defending. Um, so when we talk about building bridges and grassroots organ organizations, um, I really like to dig into what our mission values and our vision is. And this is something we'll talk about later as developing your grassroots organization is make sure that you take the time to kind of suss this out for you and your team whomever you're working with. Um, for us, it's that uh, guided by the principles of servant leadership, Building Bridges mobilizes and empowers networks of relational grassroots organizers equipped to support campaigns and causes based in progressive values. Um, and then our values. Um, we really do recognize that all effort adds value. Uh, we're committed to the development of a broad and inclusive coalition, and we conduct our actions um, based on the legacy of Pete Buttigieg's 2020 campaign. Um, as you can see there, we have these 10 values along the bottom there. Those are Pete's rules of the road. Having those values as tenants of kind of the cornerstone of your organization is a great way to kind of like revisit and kind of bring everybody back together and kind of realign um, as you need to. And then that vision is that just and equitable democracy uh, safeguarded by an informed and engaged electorate. So here, getting engaged, you can't get any more than with grassroots organizing. And we really do value everyone that participates with us. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so we basically offer our whole catalog of our leadership development courses um, in these uh, blocks of sessions. Uh, so you won't miss anything. If you kind of start in a little later, you will be able to circle back to those courses in the next session and then the next session. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, most of our courses are hosted by Kaz, Terry, and ourselves. So let's talk a little bit about what grass what is grassroots organizing. I'd love for you to type in the chat some of the grassroots organizations that you know that you that you might be brought to mind when you're thinking about grassroots organizing. 
Some of them may know uh, Stacey Abrams' organization, Fair Fight, really a great organization out of Georgia. So when we think about those, um, you know, some of the some of them are smaller and larger. Kaz, do you have some? Mothers Demand. Yes. Uh, Black yes. Mothers Matter. Indivisible. Yeah. Disabled yeah. New South. Yeah. And some of these I know started out from be after the 2016 election. And it's really exciting to see how big and uh, how far these organizations have come along, right? Uh, when we look at Swing Left and Field Team 6, Field Team 6 was a 2016 uh, as a result of that election. So it's really exciting uh, to see. Uh, Red, Wine, and Blue is another one that I'm just seeing more and more and more of. So, and then there's smaller organizations, whether it's local to Indiana, like our grassroots Indiana Democrats. Uh, we had an organization that was just kind of came in and then left the hope the who's just organized people energized kind of thing so they can be long term they can be short term they can be tiny they can be small um that's one of the beautiful things of grassroots organizing so when you think about what actions grassroots organizers take list some of those things in the chat for me that you kind of think that you would be doing as a grassroots organizer We've got door knocking, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting the petitions, yeah, yeah. Getting on. officials, texting, yeah. signatures for candidates. That's an excellent one that needs to happen. Planning, uh, phone banking, postcarding. Yes, Susan, we know that you are uh, uh, the expert on, on that. You're <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. And you can see what's wonderful about this is there's some of these that more when you approach your people uh, and you're organizing people into kind of action is some of these are really basic things you can do. Like writing a postcard is a very low entry, easy thing to do, but then door knocking a lot of people need a little more support in that. Um, so yeah, you know, the, I got started grassroots organizing to get Pete Buttigieg on the Indiana state ballot. That was my first primary organizing act as Indiana for Pete kind of thing. And then it kind of worked into traveling out of state, going to other states, all kinds of things. So it can kind of evolve there. So really grassroots movements, and I really highlight the, the these key words here, they raise awareness and support civil rights, right? We've seen those, we've informing the voters on environmental issues, right? So there's that supporting refugees, supporting candidates, protecting uh, trans kids, protecting rights that are existing, uh, supporting. So these are really the kind of actions that we take. We raise, we inform, we support, uh, that kind of thing. Really what we're doing is we're changing those norms. We're uh, really supporting uh, those groups at that local level. So we really use people in a given district or region or community as the basis for political or economic movement, right? Um, they use collective action. I think we've heard that before. Uh, we've seen this historically really bring on some really amazing changes uh, from the local level to affect the change at the local level, regional and national and inter international. So I really like to take a pause because as a grassroots organizer, you're going to be dealing, it's very, it's a very challenging position to be in. Um, you know, you, you have this passion that is really drawn you to action kind of thing. Uh, but remember that only you giving yourself that authority to solve the problem, uh, to create that future that you desire and those that you kind of collect around you that want to create that. Uh, it can be very challenging and exhausting as a grassroots organizer to not really lose faith in the work that you're doing. Uh, there's a lot of gatekeeping that exists out there, even when you're interacting with campaigns, especially policymakers, lawmakers, but really kind of rooting yourself in that you have that power, grant yourself that authority. Only you are going to do it. The reason I kind of fell into it was I had no choice. I knew no one else was doing it. I just had this really strong desire to make it happen. There was no other alternative in my eyes kind of thing. So I always talk about bringing that anxiety plus the action equals activism, right? We have this really strong issue that's concerning us that we're really worried about or this hope that we have for the future with a candidate, with a policy, that kind of thing. We want to add that with our action and really turn it into that activism. So 
Uh, a lot of us came out of 2016 feeling terrible. I had never been involved in politics before and I was devastated. And I turned that anxiety that was keeping me awake. I had to take some action. I was compelled into it. And that's where we turn into those activist kind of grassroots organizer. So when we look at grassroots, why does it work so well? Why is the, what, where is our role and why is it so valuable? We really do have a lot to offer as organizers. We can move quickly. We are not harnessed by a campaign or rules or regulations. We can literally grab a handful of volunteers and show up at an event, make the posters and do what we need to do. We can harness that local power. Uh, you know, when you have a presidential campaign or a large overarching issue, we need to work on a micro level on that local power, right? We can build that volunteer base that's going to show up, that's going to deliver the signs, that's going to talk to people and make those phone calls and things. So you really are have this powerful tool in your hand of that volunteer power of like being able to move quickly. Um, and then those personal networks that you have. Uh, so I always feel like we're kind of the micro working and then we can bring our volunteers and our expertise kind of and our knowledge of the community right to those campaigns and causes. So there's a lot that we have to offer. Uh, so when you're working with campaigns, and this is kind of how I worked when I was organizing my grassroots organization, uh, Indiana for Pete, was my goal was to support this campaign. Um, I couldn't work for the campaign. I wasn't qualified, hadn't done that before, but I had this passion to make sure that this candidate was going to have the best opportunity to kind of get out there. So they work more from the top down. They have a lot of, um, it's very formal organization. Uh, they have a lot of requirements and regulations and things and reporting structure that they have to do. Whereas grassroots organizers, we're just, we're kind of guerrilla here. We can kind of just show up and do what we want to do when we want to do it. So it's very exciting. So we kind of, meet each other in the middle and we can really, really support uh, those campaigns. So, you know, campaigns are always talking about time, talent, and treasure, right? They have a, a limited amount of time from now until November, right? They have a limited amount of talent, people that they can get staffed, geared up, that they can afford to hire, and treasure. They have a limited amount of fundraising. What's really exciting with grassroots is we're running on volunteers. We have that ability for that local communication and to increase that visibility. So we can kind of interconnect and kind of these puzzle pieces can come together and really support these progressive uh, campaigns and policies. So when we talk about this term relational organizing, we're really just talking about those formal and informal groups that you have. And this term came up a lot in the 2020 cycle. Uh, and it was really important because instead of a stranger talking to a stranger, it was a neighbor talking to a neighbor or a friend talking to a friend or someone asking someone to come and uh, hear someone speak like, hey, I had met this great candidate. Can you join me? And then letting that candidate kind of doing the work, right? But you're putting people in the rooms. There's that innate trust, right? When I bring something up that's about my community to a neighbor versus kind of another person coming in, they, we've already had that trust built up and that's really, really important. So those relational organizing that grassroots organizers bring in, that they have already are in the community and people know them, um, you know, your coworkers, things like that. So those are formal relationships, you know, people you might know through, uh, you know, your neighborhood association, that kind of thing. And then those was informal where some, you run into the grocery store or they ask you about a sticker that you have or a sign in your yard and you're able to engage with them. Uh, so once again, that's that power of like being on the ground as a grassroots organizer. So we talk about it working with campaigns um, in which I highly recommend uh, you find a way of like establishing yourself with some kind of communication with a campaign that you want to support, or if it's an organization that's, you know, in sort of in charge of legislation or things that you're trying to accomplish. Um, how many of you actually have worked with campaigns, um, that kind of thing, and ha had that interaction? And be honest, and you can kind of say whether that's been a positive or a negative, or have you felt kind of powerless to like really connect with them? Thank you. Yep, Thelma has, I have. We're going to now. Um, Natalie's worked on local campaigns. Um, Stephanie and Angie have. Angie says that it was positive. Um, awesome. Sandra, one. Jill, yes. 
to the yeah. two exclamation points. So hopefully that was a positive too. Um, Emily was a poll watcher and that was very positive, really important. Um, and, and that's awesome. Sharing those experiences of like how it went for you and how easy it was, you know, and like inviting people to join you in with that. But that's great because really when we're working with campaigns, you know, we, they have this campaign cycle, the way they're kind of, you know, we're getting, I'm starting to hear now, we're in the election cycle now, we're in the election cycle, like it's February 1st, all of a sudden, I just, the past 24 hours started to kind of hear this uh, happening, and so they're, they're getting revved up for November, they're, they're getting, uh, you know, ready to go, whether it's a local level campaign, or, or, uh, you know, a national campaign, um, and so as, you know, as grassroots organizers, we're in that organization building. So we might be building our group and team of volunteers that we can insert into the campaign, that we can support that campaign, right? Because right now we're going to be building those organizations, the campaigns are geared up. And then how are we, you know, how can we support them through our grassroots organizing, that voter contact, and then of course that wonderful get out the vote. So we're really in that kind of organization building when we're talking about building out uh, the, those organizations. So when we talk about what is a grassroots uh, organization, but who is a grassroots organizer, right? Who is that person? And I have this picture here because this reminds me of organizing from my kitchen table. Honestly, a lot of people I know, uh, you know, kind of, I took over the dining room table and I had my laptop and my phone and I had some lists that were supplied to me. And that was me. I was an organizer and I learned everything I could from uh, attending sessions like this and things like that. So really any, you know, any, everyone can be a grassroots organizer, right? It really kind of just takes the skills of, you know, passion for, for a particular topic or issue or a candidate, uh, that curiosity, where can I find resources? Where, where can I find information to, so I can accomplish this? And that desire to help others share their skills. That was a big opening uh, for me as a grassroots organizer was, uh, people were coming to me asking me, what can I do? Uh, what can help me get from, you know, this anxiety or this wanting to help to helping and empowering them to do that. So we were able to talk and be like, hey, you're really good with writing um, editorial content. Let's do letters to the editor and like letting people shine in what their skills are. Uh, and that was one thing that I didn't go into it knowing, but it was really a really awesome byproduct, just kind of letting people shine there. Are you organized, you know, getting organized, keeping lists, uh, making phone calls, things like that is to help. And then support, making sure that you're building out that support structure, that you don't want to be that lone person sitting there for too long. You will be doing that and then eventually build out that team to help you have people like, I'm not doing this alone. I have Kaz and Terry helping me. Make sure you're doing that because it can be lonely sitting there making those calls by yourself. Um, until you kind of build that team. And then ability to kind of find those connections where you can connect people with resources or people with actions. Uh, whether like I was just saying about voter registration, I was able to say, hey, try Field Team 6. They're going to be a really good resource for you. Or try League of Women Voters. They're going to be a really good resource. So just by you building your knowledge base as a grassroots organizer, you're going to be able to say, hey, this might be a great place for you to look for that. Um, that's really sometimes just being the middleman is a great way to be a, a grassroots organizer. So we're talking about, you know, building out that organization. Here are some keys to kind of successful grassroots organization, kind of how to build that. Um, we do have a lot of great kind of step-by-step, -step, fill it out as you go, ask yourself these questions um, in our step-by-step -step workbook uh, that you would have seen through the link uh, for the reminder on this call. And also it's on, the, it lives on that website, Building Bridges for America. So it's there for you. There's a downloadable black and white PDF, please feel free to share it with others. Uh, we are volunteers, so we just kind of create this content and we really want you to, uh, you know, share it out kind of thing. So how do we start out when we're developing? So we know what a grassroots organization kind of is, right? We've seen those, who an organizer is, and now we're going to talk about building that organization. Where do you start? Uh, so you're going to start out with defining, you're going to, we're going to show you how to build your team, uh, what that structure might look like. Once again, visiting that mission value vision that you want to establish uh, and what tools to use to communicate that. And really important is branding your organization. So we'll talk a little bit, as you can see, um, you know, following along kind of what we're doing is building bridges. So Sorry. Oh, are we good there? 
So defining your organization, you're really going to want to sit back and go, what is my organization? So for me, when I set up Indiana for Pete, I was ge geography was my organization. No one was organizing in the state, even though this was his home state. So I decided that's my focus. And what was I going to do? Help get as much exposure, build his volunteer base in the state. So when we came back around and he, you know, after all these different primaries, he needed us here, we were ready to go. So that was kind of my focus and reach there. Um, and then, you know, what do we want to accomplish? Oh, we wanted to get him into the White House. So it's pretty simple, you know, in the other case, we just maybe want to get a lot of Democrats ready to vote so they can vote and be ready to go. Uh, and what makes you unique? What is that thing that you have to offer that makes you unique? When we talk about building bridges, ours was um, a under, really strong understanding of relational organizing, uh, those values that we kind of came from the peak campaign, and that what our goal here, especially like with leadership, is to keep it real low entry for you. Um, we knew that there were, you know, educational programs for staffers of campaigns, but what about those grassroots organizers who have never done it before and are completely, um, you know, just starting out from scratch. So maybe find that thing that makes you unique. So that focus and reach, uh, you know, what do you want to accomplish and what makes you unique? So what are we? Are we based on geography? Are we the, you know, North County so-and-so grassroots organization? Are we the neighborhood block? of this organization, or are we an entire country? You know, you never know. Or are we kind of a coalition of people that represent a particular uh, demographic or issue or kind of thing? And understanding your why and what that story is, right? When I tell people my story about the devastation of 2016 and then having two trans kids myself and things that are really, really important to me, when I can articulate what that story is or the story of our organization, like I share, we're a lot of former Pete people. We really wanted to make sure that we were ready for the next cycle, things like that. You really want to know what that why is for your organization, because your story is your story. And that's really going to be a very strong lead for when you're talking about your grassroots organization. What do you want to fix? What's broken and that you're trying to fix? So that might be another definition of what you're doing. We're here to fix something, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, injustice that's occurring out there or lack of access to health care, things like that. And once again, what does your group have to offer that's different? And this may come from the people that you put around you that create your grassroots organization. They may specialize in something like communications or health outreach or things like that. They may bring a particular skill set that really lends this to make this group. So you might take a geography with a particular unique skill set and intersectionality, like the intersection of those, and make that into something very special and unique. So consider the intersectionality of your, you know, unique thing that you offer combined with that candidate or cause uh, that nobody else is doing. And then remember to, you know, kind of, you know, stick with that. That's what's going to make you special. Uh, looking at it too, are you long-term or short-term? If you are looking for this election cycle, that's going to be more of a short-term organization. Maybe you're going to establish your grassroots organization when it's needed for a period of time. Uh, and revive it when you need to do that. Or maybe you're going to be a long standing organization like, uh, you know, Fair Fight, that it took 10 years to build that power out of Georgia. Or you're an environmental organization that's going to be here for decades, kind of thing. Uh, so there are those long term and short term approaches to the, your organization. And then building, building that team. And that really is the heart of your grassroots organization are the people that are working alongside you. How do you recruit people that are like you? How do you find them uh, and kind of bring them in on board? Um, the way I built it out was sitting at that kitchen table with people that were like interested, had kind of clicked a box on a list and I just made those calls. And so I built it through making the calls to those people individually and inviting them and building out to a weekly event, right? I created, a, a whether it was a Zoom call or a, a kind of meetup that we were going to have. And that was an opportunity for them to invite others who were like-minded. So that weekly event might've been like updates about the campaign. Uh, I might even have had someone from the campaign. Uh, we did a great uh, a great series for, for Joe Biden when we were doing Indiana for Joe, where it was basically a, a, a 
uh, talk, a series of talks uh, about particular issues like broadband access and, and health in, in the state of Indiana. And we built an event that everyone was invited to come to. Uh, so kind of having that consistency was really, really key. It was every Monday night, we did the same thing for months and months and months. Uh, phone banking to recruit, once again, getting those lists uh, from a campaign. You may even be able to reach out to a campaign and say, hey, you know, do you need someone to call volunteers for you, people that have shown interest in volunteering and kind of even doing that. That's where I got my list and then I used it from there. Um, and then that relational, having these house parties, right? Where Kaz might know a few friends who are interested in a particular cause or issue. Um, and then we might invite them to Kaz's house to have a, a meet and greet and kind of thing. So making sure you're setting those goals. Like I might ask fellow people like, hey, thanks for joining me. You know, you're interested. Could you bring two other people with you and kind of creating those deadlines and, and date there? Um, this is a great visual, and this is in the slides, so you can kind of capture this later, of how we organized Indiana for Joe. Uh, so we had our steering committee, and then these were the areas that we kind of focused on building out. And what we did is we found people that had strengths in these areas, and the more strengths they had in that area, as you can see, the more we had kind of interest. Um, our speaker series is here. Terry helped me out with that. Um, you know, our you know that kind of thing. So having these different areas, seeing where people have special talents to bring, some may be stronger than others depending on the team that you have, and that's okay. You don't have to do all of it, kind of thing. Find the thing that people are going to take a passion for, have a passion for, and an ownership for. So really. Really just asking them, hey, how would you, how do you see yourself supporting this candidate or cause, right? Um, and then we have the structure. So here with Building Bridges, we had we started out with the steering committee, a group of people that were kind of the decision-making group of the uh, mission, values, and vision, right, of the actions we were going to take. Um, and so we helped establish that structure. Um, you know, how do we divide the actions, the different things we need to accomplish, Who's going to be those leaders? Uh, who's going to manage those social media platforms, right? Or host events uh, and that kind of thing. And then we would revisit every six months to kind of have that. Are we on the path we want to be? Do we need to change some certain things and that kind of thing? So that's where that structure comes in. What are we going to look like? Uh, you know, on that whiteboard? Are we going to have these, uh, you know, who's in charge of what kind of thing? Uh, and then how to communicate with a team. So we'll talk a little bit about some of those wonderful tools out there to communicate to. So talking about the mission, values, and vision, um, I think a lot of us nowadays are pretty comfortable with that because we're seeing even corporations are really leaning into shared mission and, and values. Uh, and then, you know, you'll go on a job interview and they're like, hey, uh, you know, I really resonate with the values of this organization and meaning that it really fits with me, right? So sitting down and kind of having that talk amongst your group of people that are, you're working on this, you know, creating your, your grassroots organization with, evaluate those things that are high tier importance to you, right? Um, look at other organizations and what they're stating their vision, mission, and values are. Maybe you can pull some things from that to kind of create that, but have yours and the consistency being sticking with those. What, what's really great about that is um, people coming into your organization know what to expect. People like that want to volunteer with you or join, you know, your grassroots organization kind of know what you are and what to expect and where your focus is, right? And then if things go off a little bit, say they're the communication kind of goes in a way that or direction that isn't really consistent with your mission and values, you can just gently say, hey, are we really aligning ourselves with those mission and values? It's a great way to kind of be that cornerstone and foundation of your organization. So there's that, you know, bringing it back. I love to use, especially with how social media can kind of go off the rails a little bit. This is a great way to kind of bring everything back. So spending some time here, really developing your own um, is a great, I, I think it's worth the investment. And there's some uh, in the workbook, you'll find some information on that too. Uh, Pete's had his rules of the road, uh, you know, those 10 values that we really resonated with. Pete 
adopted his for his Joe's rules for his campaign. Some of them are there. I like to put them side by side. Um, this really resonated really well with the public too. So not just internally for your organization, uh, but with the public when we shared with them, hey, the expectation of, of us in this day and age with how things have gone, we are expected to exemplify these values. And they were like, really? Yeah, we, we show respect. And it just with how the dialogue has gone so negative it's a great way to kind of have this like this is the cornerstone of what we stand for and we're very transparent about that um so it, it definitely is worth you know even if it's not 10 but a couple right it, it's really really good so revisiting the you know the building bridges for america is kind of having them stated out and very clearly when people are interacting with your organization this is really going to help you when you're interacting with campaigns too, because you may create your grassroots organization and you're doing your thing, but there's, you're going to want to step in and help, right? Organizations. And if they see you've really gone through and that they can transparently see what you stand for, that's going to give you a lot more, uh, you know, skin in the game, basically, they're really going to be like, oh, they've really thought these things out. They're really organized and that kind of thing. Um, we also went as far as to take our this into what our lenses were, where we're really focusing the work that we do through these lenses. Communication. So what's really cool about this is there's a lot of tools when you're communicating and you're using you're developing your organization um, that you can use that are free. Uh, for instance, Zoom was free at a low level for a while. Uh, it's a very low entry uh, kind of investment to, to be able to do this. Um, and so we can use a lot of these. And then we can also, the campaigns are using these or the, the organizations that we interact with. And when we can say, yeah, uh, you got a Slack channel I can join, you know, uh, that kind of thing. It really helps because then they know that we are equipped to kind of uh, communicate on the same way that they do. It just makes it a little smoother transition there. So in general, you know, uh, Slack is a great one that is uh, basically a web base that you can just kind of download. And it's basically message boards. And we used a lot of this when we were doing phone banking for a lot of the different um, uh, political campaigns out there. So Joe, yes. Uh, but then we were doing When We All Vote, uh, uh, Michelle's organization that she supported, uh, Fair Fight. When we would do phone banking, we would pop into these Slack message boards and get our instructions for the day. So it was a great general way. And what's really cool is it's by invitation um, and you can create different kinds of like little channels and some of them can be private. And so you can invite people to different uh, channels. And it's really, really helpful to organize. And you can host things there. You can put graphics there. You can put information that's accessible to people that have access to those channels. So it's definitely worth investigating that. The campaigns, um, <clears throat> I believe they're going to be using it again this cycle around. But it was really, really helpful. And at the time we used it, it was free. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. So here's a look at what some of those Slack uh, channels would be. Building Bridges for one, we had Turn PA. There's a lot of them out there. And that's what kind of some of the channels would look like. So when we're, <coughs> excuse me, communicating events, you found us through Mobilize. Mobilize is a really awesome platform to use for Democrats. <laughs> excuse me. You are welcome to come in and create under BB's account. But you can also uh, basically just create events under the uh, Democratic National Com Committee, which is great because the you get the best exposure through that one. Once again, like when you attended here, attendees can register, they can receive reminders, you can send emails out to them, it creates lists. It's really, really helpful. And over the years, we've seen some amazing <clears throat> advancements in it. So I really highly recommend using that for your events. Uh, that's just a great way to kind of like uh, keep track of everyone that you need to keep track of. So this is kind of maybe what uh, one of the accounts would kind of look like. And then of course, Zoom. So here we are. We kind of all jumped onto the bandwagon uh, in the spring of 2020. So really, you know, that virtual meeting management, um, Kaz, do they still do the free meetings under a certain amount of attendees? Um, I believe so. Although, um, yeah, I think so. I think, I think it's still, a, 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 so you can get Zoom without having to pay for it. 
um, and, and still get a number of people in. Plus then there's um, Google meetings and some others um, have mm -hmm. popped up um, as well. So, so yeah, there's, there's more virtual options um, that are free or you can do what we're doing and steal it from your work. <laughs> <laughs> borrow it. We'll call it borrowing. Also, in addition, like we're doing today, you can record the meetings and save them for later. Also, you can save the chat. So say, I see there's a lot of activity going on here. I see there's been like 81 messages since we started. You can actually go in and save those messages. Uh, people have been using AI to kind of pop into the chats and like create uh, their minutes for uh, those particular meetings. So it's really cool to see. But um, yeah, there's a lot you can do in that. Zoom is a great way. This way people aren't driving to events. You might have a, you know, uh, so Building Bridges is a national organization and this has just been so seamless for us to use. So, and then some additional tools to use. Uh, Google Calendar. So I definitely recommend kind of going in and creating a Google account for your grassroots organization. Uh, you'll get a calendar, you'll get uh, a space to save all your documents that people can share. Uh, you'll be able to get a Gmail account that you can create for your organization uh, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk a little bit more about the different social media accounts, but you really do want to create those Twitter accounts, those Facebook uh, accounts. Uh, and then Wix is great. This is where we host our website um, uh, for our organization. These are a little more, you know, as you kind of develop your organization, but really that's, those are some of the great tools. Another one that's really great to use on a local community letter, uh, level is your next door. I will tell you, um, you want to make sure you create a special group by invitation. Uh, so no political or progressive or any kind of um, a post will be accepted on next door. They pretty much will be deleted. But if you create your own group, and invite people to it, people will find that group and then you'll be able to invite them in. And then you can have whatever kind of dialogue you want. This is really great. There's a lot of people on Nextdoor. I love it um, to see kind of what's going on in my neighborhood. So that's not something to sleep on, especially when you're politically kind of organizing uh, on, on a local level. So some of the social media basics, because I know this can be a daunting for a lot of people. Uh, so when we talk about social media, you know, we're kind of doing that awareness, right? That general thing where most people hang out, where they're picking up memes and, and, and news bites and things like that, right? But then there's that there's an ability here through social media, through that awareness to kind of that persuasion. Uh, you know, in building out our supporter base and then that GOTV, there's a way to utilize that, right? So we really want to make sure we have that um, presence there to really kind of put that out. I used a lot of it and I personally don't use it in my personal life to really organize people who are out there and looking for, it. and it's just one of the ways we want to organize, not the only way. Uh, people that there's nothing that beats that face-to-face -face interaction, but this is one of the channels of communication we'll want to make sure we're using. <laughs> Excuse me. So where should you post? You know, where, and I would recommend picking one or two. It takes time. Usually you will find someone when you kind of pull in your volunteers and build out your team, you're going to find someone that's like, I'm really comfortable with Facebook. I would, I wouldn't mind doing that. Right. That's where you want to go. Oh, you wouldn't mind doing that. That's perfect. I'm going to put Kaz or, or you in charge of those Facebook posts. So kind of delegating someone to, to do this. Don't feel like everyone's got to be in there. Do encourage the team though, to support those posts, right? Because it's all about that algorithm. How do we get it out there? The more exposure it has. So Facebook is kind of a, a great one. If you're just like a one shot, um, you know, people use Facebook on a regular basis, 70%, you know, we get a lot of news from Facebook. So people are looking, uh, we organized a group in Indiana called Nasty Women for Indiana. 50,000 members in the state of Indiana, conservative red state, were clamoring for what to do. Give me something to do. They were adamant. We broke them into counties. We had county captains. It was amazing. It was an, an incredible organic growth that I'd never seen before. Um, and then, of course, we have our former Twitter and Instagram. But frequency is the key, making sure that you're keeping it fresh and that there's information out there that they need.
So one thing to really, uh, when you are setting up your page is, uh, and Terry brought this to mind. She goes, when I go to a Facebook page, I want to make sure I know what I'm getting myself into. Who, what is this page and what does it stand for? So this is where your mission, values, and vision come in, right? This is where you're saying, hey, we are building bridges. This is what we stand for. Then people go, oh, sounds good for me or nope, going to go on to the next one, right? So really making sure that that page is not just a feed of like chatter, uh, where people are just constantly kind of talking about how horrible things are, or they don't know what to do, or they are posting memes about terrible candidates and things like that. you really, and this was something when we were talking about that large 50,000 uh, member group was, it was really easy to fall into that. We really wanted to make sure that that reliable action oriented information was kind of sitting at the top of the page, right? That people were there to, you know, really take action, not just to kind of express their discontent kind of thing. So making sure that we have resources out there for them. What's the type of messaging we want them to share? Hey guys, send this around. This is what we're talking about now, that there's volunteer opportunities. I see, you know, we've got this phone bank coming up. We need to be down at the state house, things like that. Um, you know, oh, there's a town hall coming up. We need people to show up. Even though it's not our candidate, we need to be asking those important questions or a school board meeting or things like that. So really using it, not just a, as a chatter tool, like kind of just a back and forth, but really making sure that we're posting really, um, you know, take action focused things right there. You know, we want to really become the trusted resource uh, for, oh, you know, I'm really frustrated. Oh, let me go check out that Facebook group. I think they might have something I can do. Some postcards. I was actually pulling in resources from other groups that were organizing voter registration in one group or postcards in another. And I would just bring them to this group and say, hey, did you know that they're doing that? Really kind of channeling that energy into action. You know, we really want to motivate them to turn out, to attend events, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so what's really important is that we kind of have that authentic voice, right? That we're consistently focusing on those issues of why we're here, right? Keeping that content positive and construction constructive, being clear about it. Like, hey guys, we, you know, there's there's a lot of places where you can just chat. We're here to take action to make it happen. Um, you know, having regular routine posts that are going to have that information in there. Also, information that we're going to ask them to share out to their groups that they have. So we're creating that reach that we need to have. Um, and like I said, sharing. You know, if you're not hosting events, that is totally fine. You can be the aggregate for all the events that are happening around you. Uh, so when we're talking about voter registration, you may not need to create a voter registration drive yourself. You may be able to share information about ones that are happening or great websites that you can literally have people text to three people uh, to get voter registration. So you're really not creating it, but you're aggregating it. You're organizing it and kind of sending it out. Making sure you follow up after events, letting people know, hey, these people showed up. This is what happened. Um, you know, having going back and saying, hey, if anyone has post uh, photos to post of the of the uh, you know the local that town hall that we all went to, you know, really following up, you're actually creating more content from the follow up of the event than maybe the event produced itself, uh, kind of inspiring people. And this is one of our favorite things and one that we really don't want to overlook, uh, branding. We want to have a consistent, uh, very identifiable image for our organization, right? When we look at uh, even, you know, just a little symbol, we know what that organization is. We know it works in when we're selling a product, right? Um, why not work in a political organization? So when we organized for Joe, we had a very consistent look, color. We were using that, you know, our state in there. Building bridges, you'll see there's a consistency to what we put out, whether with our graphics and things like that. So I invite you to kind of spend that time. You may even have someone on your, your team that you develop that'll be really good with this. Uh, we love to use Canva, which is free, uh, and um, that you can find that under our resources page, you know, how to access that, but it's really canva.com. When we were organizing for Indiana for Joe, we used Canva to create really good eye-popping uh, graphics uh, with that logo in there that 
consistency was there. Um, and I really felt like it really created a, a really brought together, wrapped up uh, uh, and presented our organization very professionally um, in a way. So um, there was a being able to ID us and also look like, hey, you know, they, they look polished. And it, it was a very easy thing to do um, using the Canva program. Um, so I feel like I really do stand on branding is important, um, uh, creating uh, that consistent look that same color schemes that you're using, the same font that you're using, uh, photos or, or things like that, creating a logo that can just be used uh, and um, sharing. What's really nice with Canva is we create all our workbooks there and we create a lot of our slide formats there. Uh, and then Kaz can go in and grab it. I can grab it. Terry can grab it. So what's really nice is you're not like emailing files to each other. You can just kind of go grab that and work on it a little bit and it sits there. Um, if you purchase the account, it's like $15 a month uh, and it does open up a lot of access to graphics for you. So I do recommend that when we're talking about kind of, you know, branding and and, and that consistent look for your group. This, for instance, is, is our branding package for uh, Building Bridges. So people know to use, you know, these colors, these logos and things like that. Uh, so there's Canva for you. So let's talk a little bit more about events uh, as we kind of wrap up to the end of like taking that action, what kinds of things you would be doing. Um, the really, when I look at grassroots organizing events, it's really about people going up that ladder of engagement. Every event we approach should really be with that frame of how can I get people to come back? not just show up for that one event. How can I get that person who showed up with me at the state house to actually maybe come and work with us on our grassroots organization and invite them to be there? So it's really, it's everything to me is like getting people up that ladder of engagement. So if it's an event about writing postcards, great. Low entry level, very comfortable. Um, if I get someone to show up and help me spend a whole day registering voters, that's bringing it pretty high up that ladder of engagement, right? So really looking at through that lens of like, how can I get this person to really get involved in my organization that's going to attend this event? Um, so, you know, events can accomplish a lot at one time, right? So they can inspire people into action. Uh, you know, we can get them to volunteer. We can get them to donate. We can get them to just participate and show up. Uh, we can get them to vote, right? We can kind of have that action of what we want them to do from that event. We can build that community, a sense of community, a sense of, hey, I'm not the only one that this is really important to. Uh, we can inform, right? We can really get that information out uh, to the public and that visibility, that's so important visibility. So five people standing on a corner, uh, you know, flashing, uh, you know, vote Joe kind of placards back in 2020, uh, an immense amount of visibility for five people kind of standing there. Or do we get the, you know, free earned media and have the news come out and hear some really important speakers that are talking on behalf of what our cause is. So uh, one event or can really do a lot uh, in that in that event. Uh, some of us earlier had mentioned kind of doing some of this work, you know, you know, postcarding, phone banking. I love to hear door knocking. Uh, you know, there's also just tabling, kind of sitting out there with information. There's that visibility. We had a lot of fun doing events with signs of getting them into people's yards or standing on street corners and kind of like just creating that visibility. So there are some uh, grab and goes for like doing phone banking and postcarding. Uh, and then there's some great organizations that do the postcarding uh, and that you can just kind of sign up with. So yeah, be creative with those events. So when you're creating your event, you know, naming your event, having those graphics, you know, pulling back to that branding, um, having that anticipated attendance, uh, there's a term in organizing called flake rate, which means if you need, you know, 20 people to show up, you need to invite a hundred people to show right? And then you're going to get a certain percentage of those people. Um, and that, so understanding kind of what consistently that's going to be, you know, understanding the number of hosts you need, a schedule for those volunteers, and confirm, 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 
is really big. Even we confirm within the three of us for our leadership. Hey, what time are we going to open the room? Do you have everything you need for tonight? We're really supporting each other. So we know that we can kind of show up for those and then promotion, 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 right? Uh, also what materials are we going to have? Sometimes if we have enough notice, people will be able to send us materials for free. And then what is that ask? What's that ladder of engagement? What are we going to be asking? Are we asking them to volunteer, contribute all of the above, uh, that kind of thing and understanding, you know, kind of what the why is, what we're trying to get out of that event. Uh, so we talk about event types, you know, we've got those semi-private ones. So, you know, a, a house party, a neighborhood event, right? Not everybody's going to come to those but the, in the general public, but those, and then having a fundraiser and then those big, big events, you know, at fairs and shops and rallies and parades, uh, you know, those local community events and that kind of thing. Uh, and then those team events, days of action, whether it's like a litter cleanup or a food pantry support or things like that. These are really good to do on behalf of your organization when you're not like in the political cycle. I really like to do these days of action events just to keep your organization or your cause kind of out there um, in a no ask way. So there are some of those grab and goes. There's a great package on how to canvas. Kaz has done a spectacular job of kind of breaking down those how to canvas and providing kind of tools so you can invite people to do it and be like, hey, this is how you do it. Um, you know, keeping in mind who the audience is, you know, those that kind of thing and how you reach that. How are you going to get that audience to kind of come? One thing that's really big is kind of sitting with your group and saying, okay, these are the events you want to host, planning them early and getting it out there, getting those slots at the farmer's market that there's only one a week, you know, things like that, getting those slots at the parades in advance. This needs to be planned out for a while. I love to do a calendar because then as you're doing it, you can see where your holes are. Oh, we need something to fill up that weekend. We're not doing anything on the 4th of July, these types of things. So really as much notice as you can to get those slots. There's also a handout here, basically hosting your event, kind of a checklist, make sure that you know things are done and those deadlines, it's really, really helpful. And then also making sure that while the event is and you have set up that people are, you know, doing those social media posts, right? Hashtag kind of thing uh, and having them post and asking them to. Uh, Moms Demand had a really big uh, success uh, with the little post signs that say, you know, hashtag, you know, that kind of thing. And for some reason, that combination of like inviting people to post on social media in their booth was like very, very successful. Um, and then, you know, having that event summary at the end, who showed up and then debrief with your organizers. How did it go? Do we want to do this one again? What would we do next year? Things like that are really, really important. And so measuring the success of your event, you know, how do you know that it was worthwhile? Um, you know, did a lot of people show up? Did you raise a lot of money? Did you get a lot of signups for the next event? You know, did you uh, get connections for maybe some other events to, to attend? Uh, did you connect with other organizations at that event that really, you know, you guys can share resources and that kind of thing. So really kind of having that uh, debrief about that event and where it kind of leads you to the next one um, is really some time that's worthwhile. So we're going to hop off. And of course, uh, if we have any questions, we're going to help you out with those. But do keep in mind, there's a whole bunch of resources available for you. Um, and then, you know, some of those uh, things that you can download. All right. How are we doing over there? Oh, in addition, I do want to invite you to check out the Best Practices Institute with the Democrats, uh, which is part of the DNC. Uh, they do a beautiful job with uh, kind of training grassroots organizers too. So I do invite you to check them out.